actually for now because i want to see the chat on the screen let's end it let's end the poll so it's not showing up on here let's end the poll where's the poll staying at, at the moment who do you blame what do people say 73 votes majority of people blaming joe rogan are you guys okay you're blaming joe rogan for brendan Schulz stand-up brendan's only getting 15 percent of the of the of the blame brian cannon getting 19 and alex j alex j seven percent so clearly a lot of people in my chat in general feel like rogan is more to blame for brendan than fucking brendan is that's wild i would have never guessed that okay i would have honestly never ever ever guessed that wow that's pretty cool i'm not gonna lie that's pretty cool let me actually take a screenshot of the final thing let's see let's just take a screenshot of that actually that's important to see that's actually wild, man. I would have never flipping think that. But yeah, big up everybody that flipping <clears throat> that added their vote to that. I do appreciate you in the biggest way possible. And um, I quickly, actually, let's see, let's see. I quickly want to touch on that anyway, because we're on the topic anyway. Let's just quickly jump through it. So as we're on the topic of who's to blame for Brendan Shaw, this is the post that came to mind that somebody posted on the subreddit, right? Who's the bigger idiot? The guy who promoted the idiot or the idiot? And I guess people in the thread in general were kind of getting on Rogan more so because of how um, how kind of forthright he was about getting Carlos Mencia out of the comedy scene or exposing him for being a joke thief. Because as you guys know, that whole Carlos Mencia thing was a big story back in the day in the LA comedy scene. And Rogan essentially for a time kind of sacrificed his career to kind of, you know, fight the good fight and expose Mencia for essentially um, going out of his way to kind of, you know, take people's jokes and basically do a cardinal sin that people don't do and they're still jokes in general and generally be a bit of a piece of shit behind a scene allegedly to according to those dudes so a lot of people in the sub and people in general who are fans of the LA comedy scene are like if Brendan has such a hard stance against Cosmos here for stealing how could Brendan also be some and also him being a comedy purist and clearly you can see from the amount of talent that he's kind of pulled in to perform at the comedy mothership <clears throat> You may not like Rogan's comedy, sorry, <clears throat> but you can't deny that Rogan is a real fan of the genre, a real fan of the arts, right? Of the art itself of doing stand-up. He really kind of pays attention to it. He knows who's coming up and bubbling. He kind of has a good, I guess, judge of who's funny and who's not, with some exceptions. So people are questioning, how could Joe Rogan, quick, how could Joe Rogan kind of endorse Brendan in any kind of way, shape or form? My defense for this will be the following. If you actually think about it and you actually do your research and you actually go back into your research of your mind and think about the whole journey that Brendan and Joe have been on together and think about all the content you've watched, I can't remember a time where Rogan has said categorically that Brendan is funny at stand-up. He's mentioned a few times that Brendan's really good at podcasting. He's really good on podcasts as a, as a kind of cope. But I've never once heard Br Br Joe Rogan say out of his mouth that he thinks Brendan's funny and should be given a chance to do stand up. And people, you know, need to cut in some slack or defend him in any kind of way when it comes to stand up. He's never done that. And I honestly don't think Joe Rogan should be blamed because I think Rogan did what any friend would do. If Joe Rogan, because that's what I, like in my head, as much as Joe Rogan kind of annoys me from time to time, I still think his podcast is still the best out in terms of, you know, you know, uh, episode for episode, guest for guest, it's still one of the best out there. But I also think that Rogan, what he's also done, which I think a lot of these guys wouldn't do if they were in the same position as him, is he's, he, has, he has shared his limelight, shared his fame, shared his platform with all of these guys and girls, whether they were bigger than him on the same level or really kind of getting started. He goes out of his way to kind of help everybody around him and he considers a friend. And my theory, <coughs> sorry, God almighty. <coughs> my theory is the following. My theory is that when Rogan told Brendan to quit doing the UFC, I have a feeling that behind the scenes, oh no, he actually said, R Rogan said at one time, or maybe Brendan said it, that Joe regretted, no, I think Brian Callen said it one time in a podcast, he said Joe Rogan regretted um, doing what he did on his, on, on the Fire and the Kid that time when he did on Joe Rogan Experience, where Rogan basically confronted Brendan and said, hey, um, you're not good at UFC, you're never going to be champion, you should give up now because getting knocked out like this isn't good for you, isn't good for your brain, and you've clearly got other talents or other opportunities outside of fighting, don't jeopardize it just to follow this kind of, you know, this dream that isn't going to materialize because you're essentially not good enough. 
and Rogan said he regretted doing it on air. And I think my theory is the following. I think ever since that moment, Rogan said to himself quietly that he would do everything in his power to make sure his friend at the time, because at the time they were very close, maybe even closer than Brian Callan, he made a promise to himself he was going to do everything in his power to make sure that Brendan landed on his feet. He didn't want Brendan to take his advice or his counsel, quit the UFC, and then end up like fucked. So he kind of felt responsible for his next part of his life. So that's why Rogan went out of his way to have Brendan on his flipping podcast all the time because he knew how powerful his podcast was in terms of kind of shining lights on people and getting them a fan base and helping out them sell tickets and whatever it may be. So Rogan did what any friend should do and helped out his friend. It's Brendan's fault that he didn't do things the right way. He approached comedy and tried to take shortcuts. And one of the biggest shortcuts that he did is because the Final Kid was really popular at the time when it was starting. It's still popular now, but you know, before it was really, really popular. <coughs> Episode, <coughs> sorry episodes would get like 500,000 views you know every episode and whatnot what happened is that they started to do live shows and live shows were selling up because these guys were really popular and whatnot and at the time when they're doing live shows they would do these like comedy bit intro type of things that Brendan always talks about is his origin story now what Brendan did is that he used those TFAK live podcast things as his open mics as Kyle is saying you can't cheat open mics. So Bre Brendan didn't want to do open mics. He felt like he was above that. He, like he's already said it before, he feels, you know, the people that open mics are weirdos and he's not, whatever. He just feels like he's above it. He's better than open mics. So he used the Fire and the Kids live shows as his kind of open mic. So he basically cut a, you know, he cut corners, didn't do things the right way and essentially was performing to his home crowd thinking that that was actually improving his comedy when it wasn't. And then along the way, because he was really famous and had a bit of buzz around him, Showtime clearly saw somebody they could tap into, especially with the MMA stuff and the boxing and sports coverage, and they could kind of double dip and or kill two birds with one stone, get him on board to be a new, you know, combat um, fighting analyst kind of personality guy, and also <clears throat> get behind him in terms of sponsoring or get money behind him in terms of comedy. And obviously he took the special too early, the deal from Showtime. He definitely should have rejected it. And it, maybe, you know, it worked out for him in the long run because he maybe would have never been in a position if he never took it. But I think overall, for the for the court, for the kind of, in terms of his stand-up, he definitely suffered taking that deal. So I think Rogan can't be blamed because he gave Brendan the opportunity, presented it on Tim on a silver platter. Hey, here's a chance for you to have a fan base, make some money, have a real career, be associated with me, which is essentially a guaranteed ticket to, you know, to to doing something especially if you're creating content that people enjoy in the meantime that you're kind of appearing on the jre but then when it came to stand-up comedy he decided to cut corners and do it, do it the right way and if you remember correctly recently in the final kid episode maybe a few months back um they were having a heart-to-heart -heart between brian Callan and brendan and brian Callan, had, brendan admitted that during the time that he was offered the special by showtime joe rogan and brian Callan both said he wasn't a good idea but Brendan thought at the time, especially Brian, was maybe jealous because Brendan had kind of surpassed him in terms of ticket sales and where he was playing very early in his career. Not because he was good at stand-up, but because he was famous and he could sell tickets. So a lot of the clubs were booking him and venues were booking him because he could move tickets, clearly. And he maybe thought that Brian was telling him not to take the Showtime deal because he was jealous that he didn't get a Showtime deal. So from the very beginning, and along the whole journey, Brennan's always had a weird superiority complex. He legitimately thought that he was the special one. He was kind of ordained to take a special and different path than every other comedian that came before him. And essentially ended up kind of biting him in the ass because now we've seen he's now nearly 10 years in. I think it's maybe eight or something. And even his biggest fans can't say that there's a big leap in quality um, in terms of his stand-up from you'd be surprised to the Gringo Pappy. They're probably on the same type of level. Maybe the Gringo Pappy is a little bit better, but there's not, you know, a big leap in terms of that you would expect to see for somebody who's been in comedy for as long as he has. And I think he has suffered because he took the shortcuts, because he didn't do stuff properly, and because he felt he was special. So I don't think Rogan can be blamed for that in the slightest. I really, really don't think so. I think it's really unfair to blame Rogan because you're kind of absolving Brendan of the responsibility of doing things the right way, in my opinion. 
But then we've got this post, courtesy of Reddit, that also speaks about it. This is another thread where someone was talking about it as follows, and I find a kid's sub. Big up the user Murder Alaska. It says, Tom Rogan is, is the biggest hypocrite in the comedy world for creating the FIFA Sutherland, aka Bapa, the biggest joke slash essence stealer ever after going to, G, to on the jihad to kill Carlos Mencia. It says as follows, the clips of Rogan doing a Q&A and that cheesy video he made with the mariachi music taking down Carlos Mencia are really cringy in retrospect. Joe was out of his mind and super aggro back in the day when he went on his crusade against Messia and a few examples of stolen jokes came up with no with to, with to prove his point where like Ari and Carlos were doing the same who are you going to get the build a warp joke about the Mexicans which is a premise that is so easy I can buy parallel thinking okay cool the whole premise around Carlos Mencia I don't think needs to be argued he clearly was a joke thief and he clearly was a bad dude you can argue on the you know on the benefits or the strength or what jokes he took but this whole retro this whole kind of um this whole revisionist history on carlos mencia wasn't that bad dude isn't true like the guy was stealing jokes in front of people and performing them in front of the person on the same night like that's a, a beyond belief and then when he came to do the apology tour on bobby lee's podcast and stuff he was not taking any accountability like narcissist narcissism levels were on the on the on another planet like the guy's clearly a bit of a cunt like let's not try to rewrite history and the fact that no one stood up for him also from comedy says a lot to be fair um it continues go back and listen to rogan and opium anthony rogan spazzes out and screams like a lunatic on the radio about how carlos steals from him and everyone else honestly it's basically impossible for anyone to steal bits from rogan because he's such a one-note stool fucker and his premises only would work for a muscle brain screamo douche who can't stop talking about weed bro it's embarrassing a lot of people a lot of people think rogan's stand-up is terrible personally i think it's an acquired taste i don't think it's terrible i just think maybe his stand-up doesn't match how he speaks about stand-up like he speaks about stand-up in a really kind of analytical philosophical detailed artistic way that you would assume he's really good but when he does stand up you're like mm, he's all right so it doesn't match his talk but i don't think he's terrible i think people kind of over exaggerate but he's definitely not He's definitely not like Dave Chappelle level. No way, shape, or form. Even though he performs on the same level as him and he sells a lot of tickets also, he's not that good. But if anything, Joe is like the example of somebody who wheeled themselves into stand-up comedy. Like he did He did what Brendan didn't do. He went the hard way. He got passed by all the great clubs. He was writing all these jokes, performing as much as he can every, all the time, even though he had a million jobs. Like He kind of wheeled himself into being good. Like he, you know, with dedication and kind of, you know, time and whatever it may be, he did that by himself with his own sweat. Maybe he's never talented, never gifted to do stand up, but he got there through hard work and perseverance. So that's kind of, you have to rate that. But is he somebody that I would buy a ticket to see instantly? Of course not. Um, then to have the nerve to introduce the world to Brendan as if he's the next George Carlton just goes to, to show how redacted Joe really is. It's like Joe saying that he has an un, an unpeachable bullshit director, detector, sorry, when he is so obviously gullible. You can tell that Joe only reads headlines if that. I watched a clip of JRE recently where Joe was talking about how ridiculous it is that all of these articles were coming out about misgendering the Nashville school shooter. It's a perfect example of how redacted Joe's reading comprehension is. Joe's whole point is how the trans shooter was biologically male, which he points out is almost all school shooters. Wow. I guess he must have misplaced his finely attuned BS meter that day because Audrey Hale was a biological female who was a trans man. Michael Schellenberg, his guest on the podcast, is so cowed that he tentatively wants to correct Joe, but he loses his nerve. Okay, this is kind of just personal whatever against Joe. Um, I do understand what he means, but to be fair, like I said before, to be like I said before, I honestly don't think I can't remember. Again, maybe you guys in the chat can tell me differently, but I can't remember a specific instant where Joe said categorically that he thinks Brendan is good at stand-up comedy. He never did that. He just gave him an opportunity to get some fans, to make some money, um, to get some attention on him because he's a friend and he didn't want his friend to be out on his ass after telling him to quit the UFC. He did what any friend would do. Brendan's the one that took the shortcuts. That Joe shouldn't be blamed for this, in my opinion. 
Um, Joe Rogan having Brendan on over 80 times, still the most guest appearances ever on JRE, is like creating the Gollum or Frankenstein monster that's been roaming the villages of the internet, killing little kids and figuratively for the nearly last decade. It's one of the biggest cultural atrocities to ever exist. <laughs> compared to being involved with cancelling an alleged joke thief in Carlos Mencia whatever good that did it isn't even close Joe Rogan isn't funny and whenever he goes on a rant on his podcast I turn it off or fast forward it he is aggressively f mediocre and he's directly and indirectly responsible for how lame the internet is thank you please drive through bloody hell okay <laughs> this guy absolutely ripped joe rogan to pieces like i said i think it's not fair to blame rogan for brendan Schaub. i think you only have to blame brendan for brendan he took the shortcuts he didn't take things seriously he's also just you know just to be kind of brutally honest he's just not funny like that on stand-up and i think there comes a point in life when you reach a certain age where it just doesn't matter how long you do something it's just never gonna come if you're never that funny anyway and then you start doing stand-up in your mid-30s can you really get better over time i don't think so me personally i don't think it's possible i think it's just a ship of sail it kind of is what it is and you kind of have to take it the way you have to take it so don't blame rogan blame brendan don't blame rogan blame brendan that's my theory anyway but hey what do I know? What do I know? Moving on from this. Oh, wait, we've got a super chat. Is it going to pop through? Hold on. Oh, bear with me a second. Hopefully, this pops through and we can continue. On. Big up that Indian dude. Appreciate you, brother. In terms of Keem exploiting Boogie, Boogie is probably one of the biggest emotional manipulators out there. So don't care if Keem makes Piggy Bank from this fight. Pun intended. Yeah, big up that Indian dude. I appreciate the ten dollars super chat, my friend. Yeah, you're right. Actually, you're right. You're right. Um, I know how Boogie is emotionally super manipulative, and he actually enjoys being a low cow. So I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure he's gonna be loving it. Um, so big up you for the super chat. I appreciate you. What, Sean? A Z is Rogan's PR. <laughs> I love how you can be like a little bit objective and see both sides and then people start thinking you're capping. Like same thing when people said, because I didn't buy into this narrative that fucking, you know, um, what you call it? That Kalila was some kingpin that was orchestrating the downfall of flipping, you know, what's his name? Bobby Lee. That was somehow some sort of cuck. Remember that? The whole chat calling me a cuck for fucking Kalila. I don't give a fuck about Kalila. Like, if anything, she's fucking embarrassing. Like, when, she's, when she speaks, my ears bleed. I don't want to listen to any of her fucking content. But I also didn't buy into the idea that Bobby Lee was some innocent little lamb. Like, he's a grown man. He's 50 years old, bro. If he got flipping swindled by some woman from the Philippines, it's kind of his business, not mine. I don't give a fuck. But the whole chat was calling me a fucking cuck for Kalila. Like, ouch. <laughs> they were calling me a simp they were calling me a Kalila simp like ouch man that's so mean and now I've been accused of being Joe Rogan's PR don't get me wrong I'll take the money if Joe Rogan hired me to be his PR and run fucking defense for him right and run propaganda for him I'm there I'm running the propaganda my back's a bit screwed but I'll work as a PR I'll work as a PR if he wants to hire me I'll work for him as a PR <laughs> I'll gladly take it I'm not gonna lie I'm not I'm not above fucking selling out. I'll tell you that, mate. I'm not above selling out. I'll sell out. I'll bend over. I'll spread it wide. I'll give him my fucking man pussy. Tell you that right now. I'll give it. I'll give it up for Rogan in an instant. <laughs> anyway, 